In this video, we're going to take a look at the commutative law of vector addition. Specifically, we're going to do a visual explanation of why the commutative law of vector addition is true. That is, we're going to show why vector A plus vector B is the same as vector B plus vector A. In other words, the order in which you add two vectors makes no difference. So let's start by drawing some vectors. I'll draw vector A like this and vector B like this. They're currently in a tail-to-tail -tail configuration. And to make things easier to see in this demonstration, I'm going to construct a parallelogram based on those two vectors, and that'll look like this. This probably reminds you of the parallelogram law of vector addition. So where do we go from here? Well, I'm going to redraw vector B over here. And I can do that because this is a parallelogram. So that new vector B that I've just drawn has the same magnitude and direction as the original vector B that I drew. Now, if we look at this vector A and vector B, they're in a tip to tail configuration. So I can easily use the triangle law of vector addition to add them together. And if I do that, I'll get a resultant that looks like this. Now, because I started with vector A and added vector B to it, I could call that resultant vector A plus vector B or simply a plus b. Now let's do something different. This time I'm going to redraw vector a and I'm going to do that at the top of the parallelogram like this. Again I'm allowed to do that because this is a parallelogram so I know that that new vector a that I've drawn has the same magnitude and direction as the original vector a that I drew. And if I look at this vector b and vector a they're again in a tip to tail configuration so I can use the triangle law of vector addition to add them. And if I do, I get a resultant that looks like this, exactly the same as the resultant that I got when I added a plus b. But this time I started with vector b and added vector a to it, so I'd call that resultant vector b plus vector a, or simply b plus a. So notice that no matter whether I do a plus b or b plus a, I get the exact same resultant. So from that we can conclude that vector a plus vector b is the same as vector b plus vector a. And that's the commutative law of vector addition. One thing we should consider is what happens if one of our vectors is the zero vector. Would that change things? Well, it's a little tough to draw the zero vector since it has no magnitude and no direction. But it turns out we don't need to draw it in order to prove that the commutative law still holds. All we need to do is think about what happens if I start with a vector a and I add the zero vector to it. Well, remember that the zero vector has no magnitude and no direction. So if you were to add it to a vector a, nothing would change. In other words, you'd end up with the magnitude and direction of vector a. So we could say that vector a plus the zero vector is vector a. And similarly, if you start with the zero vector and add vector a, again, you'll get vector a as your resultant. Why? Because the zero vector has no magnitude and no direction. So if you add vector a to it, you'll get the magnitude and direction of vector a. In other words, the zero vector plus vector a equals vector a. So notice that a plus the zero vector is a, and zero vector plus a is a. So we can conclude that a plus the zero vector is the same as the zero vector plus a. That is, the commutative law of vector addition is true if one of the vectors is the zero vector.